you become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Stoicism is an ancient philosophy that offers valuable guidance on how to live a fulfilling and virtuous life. Rooted in the teachings of philosophers like Epictetus, Seneca and Marcus Aurelius, Stoicism emphasizes personal virtue, wisdom and self-control as the keys to achieving tranquility and contentment. While Stoicism does not explicitly warn us about specific types of people to avoid, it does provide valuable insights into how to handle various behaviors and attitudes in others. Epictetus, the renowned Stoic philosopher, once emphasized, associate yourself exclusively with individuals who inspire and bring out your best. In this video, we will explore seven types of people and behaviors that Stoicism encourages us to approach with wisdom and self-control. These individuals and traits can pose challenges in our lives, but by applying Stoic principles, we can navigate them with grace and resilience. 1. The Complainer Complaining is a common behavior that many people engage in from time to time. In our lives, there inevitably exists that one individual, be it a friend, family member, or colleague who habitually discovers flaws in virtually discovers flaws in virtually everything, whether it pertains to the weather, their job, or even the cuisine at a popular restaurant. They seem to seize every opportunity to articulate their discontent. Now, you might wonder, why should I be concerned? Can't I simply ignore them? Well, that's easier said than done. Consistent exposure to such negativity has a draining effect on your mental well-being. It's akin to a leaky faucet slowly depleting your reservoir of emotional energy. While stoicism does not advise us to avoid individuals who complain, it does provide valuable insights into how to handle excessive complaining and how to cultivate a more constructive mindset in ourselves and others instead of dwelling on problems. Imagine you're working on a team project at your workplace and there's a colleague who is a chronic complainer Every time you have a team meeting or collaborate on a task, he consistently finds something to complain about. He criticizes the project's direction, the allocation of tasks, and even the timing of the meetings. His complaints are often without constructive solutions and tend to focus on the problems rather than the progress. The impact, the team's morale declines, you're sidetracked from finding actionable solutions, and you'll likely find yourself increasingly disenchanted with the project and possibly even life in general. So how does Stoicism help us deal with a complainer? There are several strategies you can address. First, limit your exposure to this individual whenever you can. If that's not possible, perhaps because they're a family member or colleague, then your second option is to mentally distance yourself during their diatribe. Think of their complaints as a passing storm, loud and unsettling, but ultimately temporary and powerless against the unmovable mountain that is your own inner tranquility. Your third option is to steer the conversation towards solutions or to change the subject to something more constructive. To quote Marcus Aurelius, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. This timeless stoic wisdom encourages us to guard our mental peace diligently ensuring that the negativity from chronic complainers doesn't deviate us from our stoic path of resilience and virtue. To draw inspiration from Marcus Aurelius, who wisely said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. This timeless stoic wisdom encourages us to diligently protect our mental peace. By doing so, we ensure that the negativity emanating from chronic complainers does not divert us from our stoic path of resilience and virtue. Remember that it's natural to have moments of frustration or dissatisfaction, but consistently adopting these practices can help you shift away from a complaining mindset and cultivate a more positive and solution-oriented approach to life. 2. The Drama Magnet Imagine you have a friend named Alex who constantly attracts drama into their life as the drama magnet. Every time you meet up with Alex, they have a new crisis, conflict or controversy to share. Their life seems like an unending series of turbulent events and they have a knack for pulling you into their whirlpool of chaos. At first, you might be drawn to Alex's energy, mistaking it for passion or excitement. 
However, as time goes on, you realize that being around Alex feels like navigating through a never-ending storm. It becomes exhausting and emotionally draining. Now, dealing with drama magnets can be quite challenging because their constant crises tend to draw you in. Their chaotic situations become infectious and you may find yourself entangled in conflicts that you initially had no part in. Let's consider a practical example. You have a friend who frequently falls out with others in your social circle. One day, they're not on speaking terms with Sara, and the next day, it's Tom. Your friend often seeks your advice, but you've noticed that this cycle never seems to end, and you end up at odds with Sarah or Tom because you try to mediate. In such situations, you can employ a strategy known as reflective listening. Instead of immediately offering advice or taking sides, reflect their words back to them. For instance, if they say, I can't believe Sarah said that about me, you could respond with, so you're feeling betrayed by Sarah's words. This technique allows you to provide emotional support without becoming deeply involved in the drama. Another approach, which may sound counterintuitive, is to become selectively unavailable. Stoicism teaches us to highly value our time, and sometimes that means setting boundaries when it comes to other people's recurring crises. You can turn off your phone during specific hours, create focused periods for work or personal development, and make it clear that during these times, you should not be disturbed. To paraphrase Seneca, true happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. This perspective can be particularly valuable when dealing with drama magnets. Rather than worrying about the next crisis, focus on the present moment where you have control. Enjoy your life and don't allow it to be disrupted by someone else's ongoing drama. Make it a point to navigate your ship calmly, avoiding the whirlpools that could that threaten your voyage toward personal growth and tranquility. 3. The Naysayer Let's imagine that you're an artist painting a canvas. Each brushstroke adds color, depth, and life to your vision. Enter the naysayer. They walk into your studio, glance at your work, and immediately begin to critique it. Are you sure about that color? That doesn't look realistic. You know, most artists never make it, right? Their words, like strokes of gray paint, start to dull your vibrant canvas. This isn't your standard constructive criticism, which can be valuable. Instead, it's a persistent aura of doubt and negativity. Imagine you're excited about pursuing a new career path. You've done your research, spoken to professionals in the field, and maybe even taken a few preliminary courses when you share your enthusiasm with the naysayer. They quickly list all the reasons it won't work out. The market is too competitive. Do you have the right skills? What if you fail? Soon enough, their doubts start to feel like your own and the self-assured vision you had starts to wobble. So, how should you handle a naysayer, especially if they happen to be someone close to you? One unconventional yet highly effective method is to seek their advice rather than merely sharing your plans or aspirations. When people are placed in an advisory role, they tend to be less inclined to outrightly criticize your ideas and may instead provide more constructive feedback Another approach involves flipping the script using a technique known as positive confrontation. Instead of absorbing their negativity, challenge them to think of solutions. For example, if they say, you'll never be able to switch careers at this state, you can counter with, that's an interesting perspective. How do you think someone could successfully make a career change? This not only deflects their negativity, but also encourages a more constructive form of conversation. Remember the wisdom of the Stoic philosopher Epictetus, who said, we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. Listening doesn't imply absorbing every ounce of negativity. It entails distinguishing valuable input from mere noise. When naysayers threaten to cloud your canvas with their shades of doubt, take a step back, actively listen, reflect, and continue painting your own life with the colors that resonate with you. Refuse to let anyone transform your vibrant masterpiece into a dreary gray landscape. 4. The Victim Imagine life as a game of chess. Each player has the same pieces and the same goal. To checkmate the opponent's king, you think strategically, make some sacrifices, and take some risk. The victim, however, blames the board, the pieces, 
or even their opponent for every poor move they make. In their eyes, they're perpetually in checkmate, not because of their choices, but because of some external force working against them. Their narrative is a never-ending tale of woe, with themselves cast as the helpless protagonist. I can't get ahead in my job because my boss dislikes me, or I can't get fit because I have bad genetics. It's important to emphasize that some individuals genuinely grapple with hardships and systemic issues. However, the type of victim we're addressing here perpetually wields their predicament as a predicament as a permanent excuse, steadfastly avoiding any accountability for their actions or inaction. You might discover yourself enmeshed in their narrative, perhaps cast as the supporting character who constantly needs to ride to their rescue. Let's say you've invested countless hours consoling a friend who attributes their endless string of failed relationships entirely to their former partners. This not only consumes your time, but also subtly encourages you to embrace a similar victim mentality in your own life. So, what should you do when dealing with a victim? It can be tempting to adopt the role of their savior, offering endless advice and emotional support. However, the Stoic philosophy advises against this approach. Instead, it suggests establishing firm boundaries to safeguard your own mental well-being. You can employ a technique known as compassionate detachment. This involves displaying empathy and kindness while refraining from rescuing them from situations they must navigate themselves. Be a listening ear, but avoid becoming their perpetual problem solver. As Marcus Aurelius once wisely noted, the best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injustice. If you ever find yourself drawn into the victim's narrative, resist the temptation to become one yourself. Seize control of your own life's game board, make strategic moves, and remember that in the chess game of life, being perpetually in checkmate is often a matter of choice, not fate. Keep advancing your pieces, make calculated sacrifices when necessary, and play not for revenge or pity, but for personal growth and wisdom. 5. The Toxic Positivist You're familiar with this individual. They radiate eternal sunshine, rainbows, and an unending cascade of emojis. They're the ones who, when you're navigating a tough time, respond with a casual just be happy. Brushing aside your emotions and experiences with a carefree flourish of overly optimistic advice. Perhaps your life as a meticulously tended garden, complete with vibrant flowers, yet also susceptible to weeds and pests. Enter the toxic positivist who staunchly advocates for disregarding anything that isn't a blooming rose. Whether there are aphids nibbling your leaves or other challenges lurking, their advice is consistent. Focus solely on the blossoms and keep negativity at bay. While this approach may initially sound uplifting, it can lead you to feel invalidated and detached from reality. Suppose you're going through a tough breakup. You're sad, confused, and seeking some emotional balance. The toxic positivist's advice. There are plenty of fish in the sea. Just smile and be happy. This sort of excessive positivity neglects the complexities of human emotion and the realities of life's challenges. How can you nurture your garden of emotions without allowing the toxic positivists to indiscriminately sprinkle it with their good vibes, only mantra? One effective strategy is to engage them in a conversation that acknowledges both the light and the shadow aspects of life. When they insist, look on the bright side. At least you have your health. You can respond with, indeed I'm grateful for my health, but it's also perfectly acceptable for me to feel upset about this specific issue. Both feelings can coexist harmoniously. Another approach is to tap into what psychologists refer to as emotional granularity the capacity to recognize and distinguish among a wide spectrum of emotions, encompassing both positive and negative ones. When the toxic positivist urges you to just be happy, take a moment to identify and articulate your nuanced feelings. Saying something like, I'm experiencing a touch of melancholy today due to X, and that's completely okay, can serve as a liberating affirmation, allowing you to embrace the richness and complexity of your emotional landscape. To draw from Stoic philosophy, Seneca aptly remarked, true happiness is to understand our duties toward God and man, to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. 
It's important to note the equilibrium he highlights, comprehending our responsibilities, even when they aren't necessarily pleasant, and relishing the present moment. A stoic perspective doesn't fixate on either the purely positive or negative aspects of life. Instead, it encourages us to wholeheartedly embrace life's intricate tapestry with serenity. So the next time the toxic positivist showers their glitter on your carefully nurtured garden, take a pause. Remember that a flourishing garden requires both sunlight and rain. Embrace your full range of emotions and continue tending to your garden with the depth and complexity it rightfully deserves. 6. The Manipulator Stoicism places a strong emphasis on integrity and honesty as core virtues, while the philosophy does not warn us to avoid manipulative or deceptive individuals. It does provide guidance on how to navigate such situations with wisdom and moral clarity. When we encounter individuals who engage in manipulative or deceptive behavior, it can be challenging to maintain our own integrity and resist being drawn into their scheme. However, Stoicism teaches us that our actions and choices are within our control and we should always act in accordance with our values. You may encounter a situation where someone attempts to manipulate you into making a decision that goes against your values or best interests. Stoicism encourages you to maintain your integrity and respond with honesty and clarity, calmly asserting your boundaries and refusing to engage in deceptive practices. Let's picture your life as a movie script. You're the main character and you have an idea of how your story should unfold, where the twists are, who your allies and mentors are, and what your final act looks like. Enter the manipulator, the shadowy producer who subtly rewrites your script without you even realizing it until one day you find your storyline has veered off course. The manipulator possesses a keen mastery of emotional and psychological manipulation. They employ tactics like flattery, guilt trips, and even deceit to skillfully guide you in a direction that serves their interests. Consider a scenario where you have a friend who consistently convinces you to foot the bill during dinner. They might say something like, you know, I've been going through a rough patch lately and you're doing so well financially. It wouldn't make a big difference to you, but it would truly brighten my day. As time passes, you begin to realize that your generosity has been exploited. However, confronting them about it proves challenging because they've artfully framed it as a favor between friends in times of need. Dealing with a manipulator requires finesse. One effective method to counter their tactics is what experts refer to as fogging. This technique involves acknowledging any truth in the manipulator's statements while steadfastly resisting emotional manipulation. For instance, if they say you're so successful, you should cover dinner, you can respond with, you're right that I've been doing well, but let's split the bill as we usually do. Another approach involves establishing and maintaining clear boundaries. If the manipulator tries to persuade you to lend them money or commit to tasks that make you uncomfortable, it's crucial to assertively say no. Keep your tone composed and your words unequivocal. I can't lend money, but I'm here to offer emotional support. This approach sets a boundary while preserving the integrity of the friendship. Epictetus's wisdom is indeed valuable in dealing with manipulators. He wisely advised, we cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them. Manipulators often rely on your predictable responses, whether it's your kindness, guilt, or desire for approval. By opting to respond differently, you regain control of your own narrative. If you happen to encounter a manipulator in your life, remember that you hold the pen to your story. Your life storyline is yours to craft, and while it may include various characters, the central character, yourself, should always be guided by your values and decisions. Reassert your control over your narrative and don't permit anyone to manipulate the course of your life. 7. The Time Vampire Consider the Time Vampire as an intrusion into your meticulously orchestrated daily routine akin to a jarring dissonance in a finely tuned symphony. In this analogy, your daily tasks and commitments are the instruments that harmoniously blend to create balance. However, when the Time Vampire enters the scene, they disrupt this harmony with their off-key contributions, 
transforming your once beautiful composition into a cacophonous and discordant noise. It might manifest as a colleague who frequently interrupts your work with trivial questions, causing your productive day to fragment into a series of disjointed moments. Alternatively, it could be a friend who extends numerous invitations to social events you have little interest in, leaving you with a sense of obligation to attend and ultimately sapping your time and energy. These individual interactions may seem insignificant at the time, but their cumulative impact can be significantly disruptive. Protecting your symphony from the disruptive influence of a time vampire requires strategic measures. One highly effective approach is to employ the Pomodoro Technique, a well-known time management method. This technique involves breaking your work into intervals, typically lasting 25 minutes, followed by short breaks. Crucially, during these focused work intervals, you firmly communicate that you are not available to be disturbed. By setting such boundaries, you safeguard your most productive moments from being slowly eroded. When dealing with a social time vampire, it's important to remember that saying no is not only acceptable, but crucial for your well-being. Instead of offering lengthy explanations or excuses, a simple and polite I appreciate the invitation, but I can't make it suffice it. Declining an invitation isn't a rejection of the person, it's an affirmation of your own needs and priorities. As Seneca wisely said, life if well lived is long enough. Stoicism teaches us that time is one of our most precious resources and it should be allocated judiciously. It serves as the canvas upon which we paint the portrait of our lives and we must be discerning about who and what deserves a place in that composition. In the grand symphony of your life, ensure that each note, each instrument, each instrument, each melody aligns with your greater purpose. Don't allow anyone to transform your vibrant masterpiece into a dull and monotonous landscape. As we conclude this exploration into the characters who can potentially hinder our journey towards stoic resilience and wisdom, it's essential to remember the significance of self-awareness. While it's relatively easy to identify these types in others, the more challenging and enlightening task is to look within ourselves. Are we unintentionally playing one of these roles in someone else's life? Stoicism isn't just about navigating the external world. It's equally about understanding and improving ourselves. If today's discussion has triggered a realization, an epiphany, or even a moment of introspection, I encourage you to share your thoughts in the comments section. Let's engage in a dialogue that enriches us all. Until our next encounter, may your choices consistently align with your virtues. May your actions continually reflect your wisdom and may your life unfold as the masterpiece you are destined to create. In conclusion, while Stoicism does not provide a strict list of types of people to avoid, it offers valuable guidance on how to navigate various behaviors and attitudes in others with wisdom and self-control. The seven types of individuals and behaviors discussed in this video are all aspects of human interaction that can pose challenges in our lives. Stoicism encourages us to respond to these challenges by focusing on our own inner qualities and virtues. By practicing self-control, patience, empathy, and humility, we can maintain our own inner peace and integrity, regardless of the behaviors and attitudes we encounter in others. Stoicism reminds us that our happiness and well-being ultimately depend on our own character and choices, and by following its teachings, we can lead more fulfilling and virtuous lives.